Ah, it's so good. Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're at the range and uh, we're kind of testing out some gas masks, doing a nice and spicy little uh, stress shoot. So I mean that literally, we're about to gas each other with bear mace while wearing these gas masks during the stress shoot. So today I brought um, a good buddy of mine off Instagram, um, M57 electrical firing device, otherwise known as clay. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna run this uh, stress shoot. And what did you bring today as far yeah, as guns? guns? So I have my HK SB5 SBR um, suppressed right now with a CAC RAS quad rail on it, or tri rail, I guess. And then I brought my uh, Les Bear Premier 2 1911. Nice. And uh, what type of gas mask you running? Uh, this is a SG400 3. I think it's an Italian company. We'll see uh, how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. See how it goes. Uh, I brought this uh, Miro Safety CM8M. This is one of their newer gas masks. Um, they sent one to me, and uh, I just really want to see, like, you know, how well this thing performs. Just we're about to do like a stress shoot where we're going to be doing some physical activities, and um, it's going to end with us testing the seal on these gas masks um, by spraying some bear mace next to the shooter. And uh, if they flinch, and uh, I can already. I can already feel that bear mace. I just tested it out <laughs> over there, and uh, it's the pores on my face are on fire. <laughs> so hopefully these gas masks, um, you know, do their job and make it so we don't die when we're uh, shooting over there. Um, as far as guns, I just brought my, you know, my retro midi. Um, I use it. I'm using this just because, it's, you know, with the carry handle optic uh, or mounted optic. It provides a riser, so it's really easy to get behind it when you're wearing something like a gas mask. Um, and kind of going with the theme that we got going on today, um, just using the Beretta 92. Kind of we got kind of a 90s style uh, theme going. It's a vibe. It's a vibe, yeah. Um, and we kind of coordinate. I don't know if you could tell. And um, I think we're gonna have some fun. I wore it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he literally brought this top. So like, oh, literally everything we're wearing today was. James from Hub City Outdoors, um, he, he had his hands in. Like, these uh, raid modded tops, um, fucking super sick. James did that. MLB. Yeah. Hey, you want to show your L your uh, your kit? Yeah, sure. So, this is a LBV88. Uh, usually, you see those with uh, set up for 6 M4 mags, but this one's set up for 8 MP5 mags. Yeah. We, uh, James stitched on some... Uh, SDS MP5 mags here, and we made it work, and it's great. And then we even added a great little, oh, uh, a little bang pouch option. on the side. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just wearing this uh, Type 63 placard. This originally was actually meant to go on the um, on the JPC because I was like, oh, this would be sick, like putting this, you know, Chicom on a JPC. And I put it on there because my JPC is a 1.0, so it doesn't have the Velcro on the front. Yeah. And I put it on there. I was like, oh, this looks cool, but kind of jostled up and down. But then I looked at like my black slick play carrier, this one right here, which is actually just a Chase Tactical um, uh, or low vis slick play carrier. Like this would look sick on here, but that thing or this thing didn't actually accept placards. So Does I it sent this. It has a Velcro front, but it doesn't have like the placard uh, attachment points. These things right here. Yep. So I sent this. Uh, I contacted James. I was like, Hey, can you modify this play carrier to accept a placard? So we came up with this idea to uh, create a little attachment points right here and here. I also had them um, create a loop right here so I could put my radio on here. And dude, this is actually one of my favorite. Dude, it looks good. It kind of has that vibe because you see some of the Delta guys using like these, uh, I don't know what they call them. AWS, I think. Yeah. Strikes or? Uh, uh, strike chest rigs. Yeah. And I kind of want to go for that vibe. And I think it, I think it kind of hits it. I think you nailed it. And um, yeah, so. Great with the black play carrier. That thing looks pretty comfortable. <laughs> oh, it is. Um, <laughs> So yeah, um, let me go ahead and walk you guys through the, the drill and it should be fun. Let's do it. All right, guys, I'm gonna walk you through the drill that we're about to run. From here, you're gonna don your gas mask and at the buzzer, you're gonna sprint up here. I'm not sprinting full speed, so my cameraman can keep up with me. You're gonna sprint up to this first line down here at the end of the bay where the sled is. From here, you're gonna draw your pistol, engage the steel target five times. Once you hit it five times or you're out of ammo because you're gonna have five round mags, holster pistol, 
you're gonna pick up the lash on here and drag the sled back to this line, drop the sled, hold, grab your pistol, engage another five times, holster pistol, drag back, five shots, holster pistol, at that point you should be empty, then you're gonna sprint over here to this bay, And from this point, the guy who's timing, he's going to spray right here with some this bear mace. And this is what's going to test whether we, got, we have a good seal on our gas mask. I can still feel it burning my face from when I tested it out earlier. So from here, you're going to load a five round mag. You're going to engage one of these targets five times. Do a reload, engage another target five times, do a reload, and you should have one more five round mag, engage the last target five times, and you should be empty. I can't tell if the biggest tr struggle is gonna be gas from being tired, wearing the gas mask and doing all these physical activities, or actually getting gassed by this bear mace, because just standing behind it when I sprayed it, my face is literally on fire. I can just feel it in my pores, so. This should be a good time. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll run it first. Sweet.
Dude, the gas mask got over here. It's like, what are you <coughs> Dude. <laughs> oh. Damn. Dude, that was a strong one. <laughs> Fuck, sorry, my eyes. <laughs> overall, overall, like, how do you think it went? Like, with your gas mask and your kit set up, like, what was the hardest part? So, I really wanted to go old school with the kit because we always like talking about how, you know, you don't need the coolest kit. Mm -hmm. Nylon holster fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty good one. It's LBT. So, I don't know if you got it in here. But it actually has this tab so you can one thumb deactivate draw. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I just don't have the confidence putting it back in that I would with a rigid holster. So that kind of scared me while I have no peripheral vision with a gas mask on the range. And, you know, while I wanted to beat your time, I also didn't want to shoot myself in the leg. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing better on that second one. Oh, my God, my eye. <laughs> well, I was doing better on that second one, but... Um... I had that malfunction, which was like a stuck casing, which yeah. is weird. I've never had that happen on a Beretta. But, um, like, I felt like with a gas mask, you constantly have to be, like, because your, your peripheral vision is cut off, like you were saying. Yeah. So even with, like, my reloads and then, like, I kind of had to feel around for where stuff was more. So yeah. you kind of have to have more confidence and, in yeah, where your stuff's all new located. To me too, so my pistol mags are kind of at a slightly different angle. Yeah, you're super retro. Uh, I'm kind of like a mix of retro and modern, but it still has the yeah, same yeah, aesthetic. Yeah. So but uh, I definitely, you know, the takeaway is know your gear really well. Yeah. Um, obviously, but that goes for everything. Just amplify. Sorry. It. And Fuck it. Take Good. the pressure off so oh. the shot timer can get your times. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Some of that sweat. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's in my eyes. Oh. Okay. Well, that's it. Oh, much better. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, right. oh, it's it's drifting this it's way. It's in my eyes. It's drifting this way. Dude. Oh, my God. Oh, I... Oh. It's, the, wind, the wind must have just picked up, because I'm feeling it, too. All right, I got to keep this eye closed or something. I am, I am burning right now. <laughs> yeah, but as far as, like, the kit setups go, like, uh, the probably the biggest is, like, because you can't really see because your, your head's like this. And then, like, I was kind of trying to defeat these. But overall, I felt like it went pretty good as far as, like, running this kit. Oh, my God. I can barely focus. I know a lot of people like, love doing that sweep the rifle before they go for the pistol. So that whenever they're doing pistol stuff, the rifle's as out of the way as possible. Yeah. But it kind of got in the way of my then pistol. You, then, you have to get, then you have to get it back. I don't know. I've, I've never really bothered with that. Yeah. It, Probably would have been better just to dump it in the board. Because it wouldn't have been in the way. My yeah. pistol I, mean, I, I left mine in front of me, and I just worked around it. But depending on how you have your kit set up, it may not work out. Yeah. yeah. Overall, though, the mask for me um, performed good, other than when I took it off and then got bear mace, like residual bear mace in my fucking eyes. But uh, compared to the other one I was re using, I was using the, the older version of this, yeah. the CM7M, which has like the two eye, the two eye holes. Yeah. That one for me, I don't know what it was. I think it, actually, I think it's because of the, the straps on the top here. Um, this one has two straps on the top. This is like their newer one. Yep. So it has an easier time staying up. Because okay. like as I was sweating in the other one, it was starting to kind of like drift down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the right here around the nose started like sucking into my face. So it was like every time I would take a breath, it would, the, the rubber cup would go and just like suck into my face. So it was actually a lot. The other one? No, the other one. This, okay. this one actually didn't do that. So it was actually a lot easier um, just to breathe. How's your field of view for that one? really good i mean it's got the giant kind of scuba mask style um lens but the other like the other one i didn't really have a good, bad field of view but the biggest problem i had no matter how tight i had it maybe maybe it's a sizing issue but like i have a big nose maybe that's what it is <laughs> but this one i didn't have that issue it didn't it didn't like drift down and then like and obstruct my breathing because the other one I, I would have to go like this a little bit and just like kind of get that off my nose and my face. So every time I breathe, it didn't go like sucked into my, my, my fucking orifices. This one um, didn't have that issue. So actually, I, as far as both of them, like I like this one the best. But yeah, dude, it was. I, I, <laughs> when, when dry firing, I definitely had to camp my rifle more to get the dot in a good spot. And then for some reason with the barrier, I didn't really have to. I felt like I could keep the rifle. Yeah, it's not as, like, even with this this uh, carry handle mounted optic, like, some of them you kind of have to, like, exaggerate it a little bit just because yeah. it's so high. But I, I've i never had any issues, like, having to can it, like, excessively with this thing. I, did, I could still shoot the target 
with. It's kind of hard to tell because they have paper targets up, but um, actually seeing the target and hitting it. But overall, it went pretty good. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, other than fun. right now where <laughs> it's actually no, cleared I, up a little I, bit. I think we, the, the breeze... Oh, picked up and breathed. <laughs> <Now it's, laughs> got into his table. Gone, so I think we're good. Oh. Anyways, um, you want to just do some basic shooting stuff? And... Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. We had a lot of fun shooting it. It was fun. Uh, <laughs> if you like this uh, type of video, consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator. Um, you can follow him at, what's your Instagram handle? Who knows anymore? It's a lot, it's a lot of letters. It's so long. No, uh, firing device. Uh, sorry, firing device electrical M57 with some underscores and shit. You'll find him. You'll find he's, him. He's a, you know, he's a big Instagram star. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows why? <laughs> you can also go to my website um, at thebluegeneoperator.com. There you can find some cool shirts and merch. Um, I'm actually about to drop another cool shirt here pretty soon. And um, all that stuff kind of helps support the channel. Um, it's how I get, you know, any money off this stuff and helps, you know, pay for any of the, you know, the expenditures out here. It's not cheap. But, uh, and he doesn't do cheap shirts either. They're, they're real soft. So yeah, they're really it's, good. They're for worth looking. wearing. <laughs> yeah. I don't get the cheap, you know, 100% cotton stuff. It's all, you know, cotton poly blend. What people, you know, who like to wear t-shirts like to wear. Won't shake your nipples. No, no. During strenuous activities. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, again, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you guys next time.